We thank you and we bless you, Lord. We saturate the atmosphere with your glory, yes. Father God, that you can move, Lord, and it can be conducive to what and how you want to move in and with and through your people, Father. And Father, we the redeemed of the Lord do say so. Amen. 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 Amen.
Excuse me, sir, but the men in the conference room? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. But women weren't counted as people. They were almost counted as property. But God had to change some laws and some cultures. And the power that resided within Jesus, it went across the laws of tradition. It went across the law of culture. Why? Because as the woman of God said, there are people attached to your destiny. So Jesus didn't come to condemn the law, but he came to fulfill it. So in fulfilling it, he had to break down the walls of society, traditions, and custom to bring forth people who needed to serve in the kingdom of God, people who were predestined to the kingdom of God, people who have an assignment that they need to fulfill. There are people's names written in the book of, of life that has to come forward. And if we sit in a style of tradition, customs, and judgment because of different denominations, we're going to miss the harvest, and then we're going to miss out on the true assignment that God has for us. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to John, the third chapter. Amen. We're going to revisit some things. And even though we talked about this before, when I opened my Bible last night, without even thinking about this, God took me back to the woman of Samaria. And he brought out something totally different. How many know that when you read the word of God, the Holy Ghost will begin to illuminate certain things for the now. Yes. For the now. Amen. We live in the now because we have to have now faith. Amen. And the word of God is what increases our faith. So he brings us what we need for the now. So we're going to begin to read from John, the third verse. John, fourth chapter, the third verse. Amen. I sometimes like reading from the Amplified because we need to get a better understanding of some things. Amen. John, fourth chapter, starting at the third verse. Amen. All right. This is talking about Jesus and how they just got through finish having a discussion about who's baptizing more. And he was going to argue, yeah, I'm, you know, John the Baptist is doing what he's called to do, but I have to still fulfill the law and I'm baptizing too. He says, okay. They were getting a little bit upset with, you know, with the parallel work because they couldn't understand how John the Baptist was a forerunner and Jesus was who he was speaking of and their ministry was like intertwined at the moment. And so Jesus says, okay, let me separate so they don't get confused because John the Baptist is going to fulfill his assignment. I'm going to fulfill mine. Let me go to Galilee. Yeah. So in verse 4, well, okay, verse 3, he left Judea and returned to Galilee. It was necessary for him to go, it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. It was necessary. He who was led by the Spirit of God. See, we have to understand, even though we think this is the way to go, we have to always keep our ear open to the Spirit of God because everything that we see is not necessarily what it's supposed to be. So he is on this journey said, it's necessary for me to go through Samaria. And in doing so, he arrived at Samaria town called Sychar, near the tract of the land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down to rest. By the way, it was about the sixth hour, so it was about noonday. Presently, when a woman of Samaria came along to draw water, Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone off into the town to buy food. You know, we have our inner circles, but sometimes our inner circles don't have the same kind of faith as we have, or they don't understand our assignments as we do. And sometimes God will separate you from those that are so close to you and so familiar to you so that you can accomplish what you need to do. Amen. So his disciples were sent away to go get food. The Samaritan woman said unto him, How is it that you, come on, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan, and a woman, see, that's culture, for a dream. For the Jews have nothing to do with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, 
if you only know and had recognized God's gift and who it is, who this is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him instead and he would have given you living water. She said unto him, sir, you have nothing to draw with, no drawing bucket, and the well is deep. How then can you provide living water? Where do you get your living water? Are you greater than the superior and superior to our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and who used to drink from it himself, and his sons, and his cattle also? Jesus answered her, All who drink of the water, of this water, will be thirsty again. But whosoever takes a drink of the water that I will give him shall never, no, never be thirsty anymore. But the water that I will give him shall become a spring of water, welling up, flowing, bubbling, continually within him for eternal life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never thirst, nor have to come here to draw. At this Jesus said to her, Go, call your husbands. Your husband. And we know the story that she admit, you know, okay, I'm going, but he said, you know, that one that's not, that you're with is not your husband. But it goes on to say that she perceived that Jesus was a prophet because he began to tell her about herself. So this morning God says, we have to understand perception and then reception. So she perceived because of a dialogue. He stepped across culture. He stepped across the laws of the land. He stepped across tradition because this woman needed to come into her purpose. This woman needed to come into her destiny. But she perceived through a dialogue, you're not the norm. You must be a prophet. Okay, child of God, you're somebody different. We was leaving the lobby yesterday, and all of a sudden this man thought we were going to church. Just out the blue, he perceived something about us. So when you're a glory carrier and a light bearer, they're going to know who you are. They're going to begin to perceive. But the reception of what God wanted to do happened because Jesus took time to dialogue. He didn't sit there and say, oh, Samaritan sinner. You know, he began to dialogue and have conversation. We have to be able to engage people. He knew he was on an assignment because it says it was necessary for him to go to the city. So he went, and there he found his assignment. I remember back in the day, the Lord would always send me to the Bible bookstore. I have a great collection of books. But whenever the Lord sent me, sometimes it was for a book, but 90% of the time it was because of somebody. Somebody to engage Somebody needed to hear a word from the Lord. And so I'm like, wow, this is kind of nice. Then he began to sing it to the laundry man. It's like, I got washer and dryer at home. But it was needful to be obedient and go to that laundry man because somebody was a part of my destiny. Somebody was a part of my assignment. So we need to be able to open up as Christians and allow people to see that we're human, that we're humble, you know, for so long, church folks just put on their church clothes and go and they act a certain way. You know, I'm not going to bash the Jehovah Witness, but you know when they come because they got on their Sunday suit, they got their bookcase in their hand, they're on their mission, and how do you run from them? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. But that's perception. That's perception. And God is trying to break it down to where we're not judging. I've had encounters with the Jehovah's Witness at the door, and I only do it when God say do it because he knows whose hearts are ready to receive. So there's times when it's like, okay, I got to go out the door today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I don't know what's about to happen, but he said, you go and you talk today. And then as they begin to start their subject, you listen. And then you allow the Holy Ghost to instruct your conversation. So as they begin to talk to me about Jesus being just a prophet, Hmm. I just flipped the script. <laughs> yes, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. Oh, no. You know, and then the dialogue goes on. And as God begins to plant the seed, you continue to pray because God has given them word because you're the vessel and you're the reason he brought them to you. 
because he released you to go out the door and dialogue. So you release what God has for them, and then you seal it. I mean, you got to be bold enough to seal that thing even in their face. I pray that whatever God has ministered to you, if you don't even understand right here, right now, that God will continue to bring the revelation, and I seal it with the blood of Jesus. We have to continue to walk in our authority, amen, and the power of God that's on the inside. Because he said God is in us both to will and to do of whose good pleasure? His good pleasure. It ain't about us. It's about his good pleasure. So there are people attached to our assignment. So this woman began to perceive. And then God began to go inward. Go get your husband. Uh, you know, frozen. <laughs> yeah, the husband, that man that you're with, he's really not your husband. And he began to tell her things about herself. And then she knew. Oh my God. Come on, yeah, it's something to it. And then he began to reveal who he was. It's not necessary that we have to reveal who we are. We just have to go through the flow and what God is saying for that person's need, for that person's growth. I love the story of Philip, how Philip was attached to that chariot. Yeah. And you know, it says he was carried by the spirit. Yeah. So here he's being carried by the spirit and God brings him and attach him to a chariot. And as he's attached, it says, I'm reading about this man, and I don't understand. Philip met him where he was. Yeah. So we can't be dogmatic about oh, what we think. Yeah. We can't just go preaching to somebody that God has brought us to. We have to listen. So Philip listened, and then he began to explain Jesus from that place and brought that man forward. And then as they were riding and they had sharing, they're sharing dialogue about this man Jesus that he's all of a sudden totally excited about it. He said, hold it! Stop the chariot! There's water! What prohibits me from being baptized? He says, nothing. Let's do this thing right here, right now. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we have to be bold enough to follow through as well. I remember the church that I came back to the Lord. They took us through a new members class. And in that new members class, they taught us how to baptize because we are without excuse. What did Jesus do? Jesus was in conflict. John the Baptist is baptized, but so are we because this is, a, this is part of the salvation plan that he has set for us. We are identifying with the death, burial, and resurrection. So this is what God said. This is the way it's supposed to be. We need to be ready to be able to do everything. We should be able to share the plan of salvation. We should be able to lead them into salvation. And if they desire to be baptized, all the Bible says is you got to repent. You got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he didn't stay in the ground, but he rose and he ascended before the Father to bring that atoning blood for us. And he is alive. I believe that he is. And then upon the confession of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus for the remission of your sin. Come on, that's Bible. So we all should have the ability to bring somebody fully into the kingdom of God. Yeah. But perception is what God is speaking about today. That we should be able to perceive our assignments. We should be able to what? A coup. <laughs> Listen with the intent to obey. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. Obedience is key. Yeah. Obedience is key. Because when we are able to relate and we can dialogue, it opens their heart. They was like, wow, something's different about you. You know, I can talk to you. I can tell you my problems. And a lot of times when people are telling you their problems, if we're listening God's going to tell you exactly what to do. I know there's times when I'm engaging in a conversation with people and they'll just talk about, man, this brother just hurt me and they did this to me, they did that to me, and the conversation may shift. I heard that. And they want to act like it really don't matter and they keep going on and going on and going on. But God made me hear that. So before that person can leave, my brother's like, hey, you know what, I really feel the need to pray because I heard that. There's some soul hurting. That soul can't move on beyond, beyond that pain. 
That person has a purpose and a destiny. So if God calls me to hear, we need to pay attention for the next instruction. You hear apostles say over the weekend, you know, I ask God, what is it that they need? I ask God, you know, who should break? You know, not that everybody has I mean, everybody has the ability to pray, but who's on assignment to pray? That's in the house setting. But we need to understand, okay, God, you caused me to hear. How do you want to go about this? Yeah. You know, we've been taught in the church, and Lord Jesus, break down tradition, that there's a certain way to minister. Mm -hmm. But the certain way to minister should only be that which is led by the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. 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 Because, Amen. like, we went to the prison yesterday. Instructions were, do not touch the men. But, oh, my God. The man was telling Pastor Bill, I almost fell out. Why? Because first of all, we are accustomed to laying hands. But God said, don't touch them. Our hands up raised and the fire and the power of God is hitting those brothers. You know, but we stepped out of our comfort zone because God said, don't do it. Because he wanted to do it. And it made a big difference. The brothers was feeling the power of God without somebody touching them. Until God releases us into it. Yes. Perception and reception. Amen. Moving on. So the Samaritan woman had a great experience with Jesus behind a dialogue. She got set free from her past of all this adultery and stuff that she had encountered with all these men that had a husband. God set her free. How do you know she was set free? Because she went around. She went around. No, no. 
love, grace, and mercy. Yeah. And then he told her, go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. And who was this woman? A woman that loved Christ for the rest of her life. Amen. She was just totally amazed. You know, grace and mercy. I'm going to skip the Sarah Phoenician woman, even though she's my favorite. Because she was the one that came to Jesus, needed healing for her daughter. And I say, Jesus must have, ooh, if that was me, it would have been insult after insult after insult. <laughs> but her faith said, you know what? I can't give crumbs to dogs. You know, it's like, dog, Jesus come in dog. <laughs> but I need something from you, Jesus. Yeah. And she did not stop until she got what she wanted. Because, you know, sometimes people don't understand how to get to Christ. But when you are in that place of your purpose and your destiny, and you see people in that situation, you still got to hear from God. Well, God, mm, that's a buzzer. You know, they don't even believe in you. They believe in Allah. But you can hear the cry of a soul. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah. break down these walls. Release us from religion, God. Yeah. You can hear the cry of a soul. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? He says, well, you know, I'm not supposed to give the children bread to dogs. However, he had that grace, that mercy, and that compassion of the Father, and he stood still long enough to understand, yes, thank you. And that child was healed. That child was healed because God released the word because that purpose, that person is a person of destiny. And then the woman that had seven demons. She had seven. We don't know what they were. I know I was delivered from rejection. I know I was delivered from resentment. I know I was delivered from uh, bitterness. I can't remember all the mother was, but I'm still walking through deliverance because I've made some judgments with my mouth as a child. I've been released from judgments. You know, because we, we say, say for instance, your mom was crazy. Your mom was a drinker. Your mom was out, yeah, an alcoholic. And she was very abusive. And you say, I don't want to be like my mom. Mm -hmm. And then you grow up, and guess what? You're just like your mom. Mm -hmm. Those judgments, I made some judgments. So God had to show me judgments. And he had to release me from the judgments, not to be judgmental. So this woman had seven demons. And you don't know what the seven demons are. But you know where you were. Delivered me from drugs. He delivered me from alcohol. I had some things inside of me that, you know, I'm not ashamed to talk about. This woman had seven. And God's grace and God's mercy delivered her from her dysfunctions, from her past. Why? Because he was able to hear his assignment. Because he was moved with compassion. He didn't only come to save, but he came to destroy the works of so every child of God, what would Jesus do? Have the ability to perceive those that he brings you to, those that he brings to you, amen? Yeah. To understand, you need to start practicing asking God, what is this? You brought me to them. You brought them to me. What do you want to do here, God? You know, I, I didn't do that for a long time. I think it's been like the last five years God has taught me, start inquiring of me because otherwise you're operating in self. You're operating in religion. You're not operating in me. You're just doing things. You may be doing a good work, but you can do a great work if you just listen. You can do a great work if you just inquire. You can do a great work when you allow me to move through you the way I desire. And it takes practice. It takes practice to perceive so that they can be seen. Amen? Amen. 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 So perception and reception. Let that be your portion for going before God. God, help me to perceive my assignments. Help me to perceive the need. Help me to perceive, hallelujah, the cry. Help me to perceive it, God. Yes, Lord. I'm telling you, they're coming. They're coming. The only way they're going to come in, some of y'all going to have to go get them, evangelists. Mm -hmm. Y'all going to have to go get them. And when you're out there walking, you would be on your way to the store, and all of a sudden, Holy Ghost goes for you. Look, you got to receive it. Father, what's the need? And then you're going to have to be humble. 
and you're going to just go up to them and you're going to greet them. You're going to be personable. Hi, my name is so-and-so, you know. I just want to say Jesus loves you. And then if that's an offense to them, you're going to wait for the Holy Ghost for the next sentence because he knows how to break the laws. Yeah. You got to allow him to break the laws. You can't press no farther than what he's going to allow you to break. Yeah. You got to really listen. And then if there's an encouragement, if there's healing and deliverance, it's not always just playing on him. God is bringing us into a place of power and glory in this age where we're going to be able to speak a word, release a word, and they're going to be healed. They're going to be set free. They're going to be delivered because the church has already portrayed something. Jesus didn't do all that hooping and hollering. He spoke the word. And we're going to walk in that too. The word of God. He sent his word to heal. The, the man says, look, you can't come to my house, Jesus, because, you know, I, I know my life. But you're a man of authority, and I understand authority because I'm a man of authority. Just speak the word. When you understand your power and your authority, because it's not yours, it's his. You trust God to do the work. You know, Lord, she's crippled. I don't know if I should lay hands. Speak the word. And if he say lay hands, you better lay him. Because it's him that's wanting to do what he needs to do for his child of God. So let's step into perception and reception. Understand, they need to receive. They need to receive the Lord Jesus in this hour. I'm going to bring Prophetess Janice Gay at this time, and then we're going to shift again when she's done. Amen. 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 tied up in bondage, that means she was tormented, 
She was enslaved with this issue. Hallelujah. She was entrapped with it. Hallelujah. Just with this issue of blood. And do you know, when you entrapped and you enslaved with something, and that thing just investing on the inside, everything can come. Anything can come. That's like if you if you fall and you get a scar, and if you don't take care of that scar, it's going to get more infected, pus, um, the maggots, all yes. that filthy, dirty stuff that gets on the inside. It, it can, and it can get even deeper. It can become cancerous or whatever if it's not taken care of. So this is how this woman was. She was bound with all of this Jesus. issue of blood. She had went through so many doctors yes. until she came to the right physician. Amen. Amen. And that's Dr. Jesus. Because yes. he said he's the healer of all manner of sicknesses and disease. Hallelujah. So, and to top all of this off, she was considered unclean yes. in those days. Yes. Like the lepers. Hallelujah. So, you know, when you, you had leprosy, you couldn't be around other people. You had they had a place where you, in other words, you were separ separated from them. Yes. And segregated from them. And they and so from that, this caused more issues for her. Because she had to be separated from people. And these people <laughs> included her family. Okay. Those closest to her. Yes. Her friends. Maybe. She might have had children. It doesn't say. Mm -hmm. But she even had to be separated from them. Mm -hmm. That did not feel good. No. So that caused more things to infest yes. her. By God. God is so good. Mm -hmm. And because of this, can you imagine how she was entreated? She talked about it. You know how the kids do? Oh, she got to do this. Ooh, I don't want to be around her. Ooh, girl, you hear what she got? What was going on inside of her? So now that's causing more issues. She's already feeling dirty on the inside. She's already feeling lonely and abandoned and rejected. Now comes low self esteem. Yes. And many of us have low self esteem. Mm -hmm. God has showed me some of the faces of you that in areas there's low self esteem. Even though we put on this big old yes, smile, yes. Mm -hmm. low self-esteem is yes. there. And I wanted, I wanted your daughter to be in here because she's one that the Lord has really been dealing with me about. There's some issues going on on the inside of her that's causing her to have low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. But when she gets around the right people, Amen. God brings it up out of her. She begins to yeah. smile. But it's still a veil. There's still a scale there because that low self-esteem is down on the inside of it. And if we don't take care of it at a young age yes. now, mm -hmm. it's going to fester into those bigger things. Mm -hmm. So, she had low self-esteem. She had rejection, abandonment, even insecurity. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like I fit. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be a part of me. I'm just going to sit down and just Guess what? If she's doing that, the enemy gets his chance to go in deeper on her. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And just like her, we have issues like that today inside mm -hmm. of us. Whether it be broken in a marriage. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're together, but we're not together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Walk that prank before. Was married, smiled like this. But on the inside, I was just so broken, just tore up. I'd go to work, and women would talk about their relationships with their husbands and how much fun they had and what they did, and I would just sit there. And in my heart, God, I wish my marriage was like that. Mm -hmm. And that's when she said, you got to perceive when you're going out there, woman of God, you got to be so sensitive to hear Amen. what the Spirit of the Lord is saying for that person. Amen. Because that very person may need your hands that day yes. for that they don't die in that place that they're oh, at. Yeah. So when God says move, we got to move out just like that. Amen. Hallelujah. And 
I remember sitting there and I would just sit there and I would smile and they never know that. But then even sometimes the tears would come and I get my little tissue and they would see it. But I was just broken inside because of what I had went through. And I'll share that in a few moments. God told me I had to share my life story, my testimony. Hallelujah to where, how I got here today. Yes, yes. Glory to God. So she was talked about, and God said, we have issues like that today amongst us that we are ashamed of. Mm -hmm. We are ashamed of or embarrassed to even talk about. But that's why God sent me, sent Pastor Tina, oh. sent Apostle King, so that we could be able to talk about it. And I loved how yesterday how he got on the floor. Did you see that? He sat down on the floor. And like she said, perception, the way of tradition and religion was, huh, oh, Jesus? Oh, what? He would have been like that woman that was caught in the act of adultery if it, if it were left up to people. But that's why God says, judge not, lest you should be judged. Hallelujah. But God is a humorous person. He'll sit down in the floor. He'll sit right next to you. And if he needs to just sit his spirit up on your lap, he'll Amen. do that too. Amen. Because God knows what each and every one of us have need of. Amen. And that's what it's all about, loving on one another. Amen. Hallelujah. So that we can be sensitive enough to feel. Yes. And God will allow you, evangelists, I can't. I, I can't I don't know, it's about you right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is going to allow you to feel the hearts of the people. And as you feel the hearts of the people, he's going to give you how to pray, how to pray for that particular person. So we have to be a sensitive people. Hallelujah. So that we won't miss it. Because how dare somebody comes in here and they might have on the finest of fire. Hmm. Fighters, but it's broken on the inside. Yes. We let them go back out the same way they came in. Hallelujah. In the men's conference room. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God. Uh -huh. It's about the women today. And it's about the men today. In oh, the place. Because we're going to get free of some things. Hallelujah. And sometimes we can't yeah. get free of things. The men there. Amen. Because there's some personal things that we might need to talk about. Yes. Hallelujah. Because it's not about them. Glory to God. So, praise God. Thank you, Lord. So, even with the issues, God wants us to be free, to be able to know that we can come to him and get free of those things. And he doesn't want us to be ashamed of it. Hallelujah. For fear of what people are going to say. And also, how they will treat us. Glory to God. So let's find out how we're going to get free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Matthew 8, 36 says, Whom the Son sets free Hallelujah. is free indeed. We got to first admit, Lord, I have a problem. I have an issue. And Lord, help me not to be ashamed to come before you to, be, to get free of this that I can speak this thing out. It's the same thing when he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, then thou shalt raise me from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you gotta speak it. You gotta purpose it in your yes. heart. See, God already knows. Even before you come, God already knows. If you're serious or not. He wants you to be real with him. So, as you come to him, God says, and you bring that issue to him, hallelujah, he'll set you free. Yes. Hallelujah. And what did she do? She, she just touched the hem of his garment. God didn't put his hands on her. He did it with his virtue. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. With the power, the yes. anointing. And she had the faith to believe yes. that God could do it without him even having even though he touched her. Yeah. Hallelujah. In a greater way, just like the Samaritan woman. Yeah. She went and God knew everything about her. Hallelujah. And her faith as well. Yeah. Let her know. He's come see enough to tell the other people. Yes. Come see. I met a man. I want you to meet a man that can 
can tell me everything. He knows all everything about my life. Yes, he might perceive that he Hallelujah. is the Messiah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. Thank so you. see, when you, you're honest with yourself first and you come before the Father, your heart's already prepared. Your lips speak out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your lips and your heart can speak out to God. Then he can see you. Hallelujah. Just like that. Amen. And you don't have to wrestle with it no more. He can take it away just like that. Because yeah. that's the type of God he yeah. is. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. And then he says in 1 Peter 5 and 7, cast every care upon him. For what? He cares for you. Yes. He cared enough about her. She cast that care up there. She ran to be able to. She, it didn't matter. She broke through that crowd. Just crawling and trying to get there. She didn't care. Maybe she might even got cuts or scratches or whatever. Bruises on her knees trying to get there. But it didn't matter. She cast that care up on the Lord. Because he cared for her. Amen. Hallelujah. He can do us the same way. Because he said he has no respect to person. Hallelujah. First John 1 and I. Oh, I love it. Hallelujah. He's a forgiving God. He says, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Got to get the glasses on, y'all. <laughs> Faith. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, one and nine. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. He's faithful. Hallelujah. It's us that holds on to this old stuff. Mm -hmm. And God even took it away. He said, when I take it away, I throw it into the sea yeah. of forgetfulness to be remembered no more. Amen. He doesn't remember it anymore once we give it to him. Thank it's you. us yeah. that pick it back up. Mm -hmm. And we keep revisiting that thing. God don't want you to revisit that thing. But he does want you to revisit the new thing that he's doing in you. Because you have become a, become a new creation in him. You're, those old things have passed away. And it has now become new. You're a new creation in him. She was a whole woman after that. She was made new. I, I can imagine people must have gone, ooh. Who is that? You're probably thinking, looking at her like she was the Messiah. Because I know the glory of God was all over. Hallelujah. And that's what he does. He fills us with the glory. Hallelujah. He puts his anointed touch on us. Hallelujah. And people, when you walk in, you don't have to say who you are. Hallelujah. But you know who you are. And then others will know you by the works. Just by Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. This is good. Glory <laughs> to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then God doesn't want us to be fearful. Yes. So many times that's what keeps us from getting here. I don't want them to see. They don't look at me. Oh, I don't want Jesus. them to know that I was a queen. Jesus. I don't want them to know that I. Yeah, I dibble and dabble in yes, this yes, yes. I don't want them to know that. I don't want them to know that I told this lie over there. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And God said, don't be fearful. Amen. And he told us in 1 Timothy 1 and 7, fear, he said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but yes. what? Uh, but a power and a love and a sound mind. And that power we're talking about is the power of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. You have the same power yes. that Amen. Jesus had. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So you're going to learn how to bring up that spirit of fear when it comes. I rebuke you, say, get out of my ears. Right. Hallelujah. Right. I'm right. an heir to the promise. Yes. I have a purpose yes. that I have to complete. So I gotta get free from this. Yes. I cannot keep holding on to this thing. Yes. There's many others out there that need my hand, yes. that need my voice, yes. that need my feet yes. to run and tell them that Jesus is a healer. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus 
Jesus is a physician. Oh my God. Jesus is a teacher because he's all teacher. And he sent me the comforter that would teach me and guide me through all things and bring all things back, all things back to my remembrance of him that I need to know about. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So I'm not going to let fear come in. Right. Hallelujah. I'm a bold soldier in Christ oh, because I know who I am yeah. and who I am. Yeah. And that makes me free in Him. Yeah. Hallelujah. I possess the power oh, of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. And I've learned how to trust in Him. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 yeah. always tells me yeah. to trust in him with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding. Yes. I'm not going to think about this altar no more. I'm going to just come when they call. I know I got a problem oh, yeah. today. I know something ain't sitting right yeah. with me in my marriage. Yeah. God, I want it better. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You said, when you call us together to be as one, yeah. forsaken mother and father, and you said you let no man put us under. Yeah. So father and sister, the issue with me, I'm not going to look at him. I'm going to look at him. Yeah. God, I need your pay because yeah. it's about me. And they say, Mom, you don't do this right. And I, and I keep packing over all. I know better I'm the parent. That's right. Sometimes parents can make mistakes in this life. Oh, Hallelujah. I have to learn from my children. Yeah. Hallelujah. I have to sit and listen to yeah. what they say. Yeah. I didn't let them know right then and there because there's an order. You got to let them know I still stand to be your parent. Yeah. No matter how old you get. You'll never be older than me. Thank right. Hallelujah. And you got to respect your parents. That's, that's right. Because right. that's the commandment that God gave in his word. Amen. Obey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Children, be obedient to your parents. Yeah. Yes. You. But then he goes down there a little further and he tells the children, the parents, to not to provoke. push those that's children right. and provoke them to the wrath of yeah. anger. Right. So I go back to the Lord. Put a check in point. I say, God, now this one said that, and that one said this. God, you show me how to do it better. Yeah. God, because I thought I was doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's the only lesson that you don't get any training in, yeah. and that's being a parent. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They don't have a manual for being a parent. They can write books, they can do this, yeah. but there's no manual. Yeah. You got to get it from God. Yeah. You have to. That's right, right here. It's in the word. Thank you, Lord. So I go back and I say, God, help me. Help me, Lord. I've come into this altar today, Father, because it's not about my children, Lord, but it's about me. I want to be that effective parent. Because, see, I don't just have natural children. I have many spiritual children. And I don't want to leave them all because I'm living somewhere because of a parenting skill that I got that I thought was right. Hallelujah, Lord, take it off of me. Take it off of me, Lord. Hallelujah. So then you can't lean to your own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your steps. Hallelujah. He said your steps are already ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. He'll direct your path. So we just have to stay in that flow of God. When God is saying something, I love that word of cool. Listen with the intent to obey. You're not going to forget that. Hallelujah. Because God wants you to hear him. And when he's speaking, just be quiet. Yes. We're so busy, really, women. We're so busy talking. We do. We talk. We talk. We talk. But sometimes God wants us to just be quiet before him. And listen. He might say, Yes. 
Glory to God. And Matthew 11, 28 tells us, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy burdened. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God will give you rest. He knows the burdens on you. Yes. He already knows the pain that you're suffering. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now I get to tell a little bit about Pastor Prophet Miss Jenkins. From the age of 13, hallelujah, almost to the age of 18, an old woman with the, with the second child on the way. My God, I was violated. And I thought, oh, my God. I went to school with clothes on from the neck to the bottom. I didn't want to be seen. I had that shame. I felt like, ooh, I'm not loved. And then the spirit of low self-esteem came in. I felt like I was ugly. I felt like I was unworthy. And then I stepped into the promiscuous life. I got married at an early age, had children. I'm like this married woman. He, I was married to him, but he was not my God-given husband that God had for me. I'm still waiting on him. Now, God has shown him to me several times, but I've got to wait on him. So when I stepped in, and because of that, the very same abuse that caused me, I, I, got, it, I allowed that to happen to my daughters. They were molested. Same thing. And I thought, oh God, I blew it. Then one day I went to church and at a prayer meeting, the Lord said, hallelujah. I want to heal you today. I want to take all those pains from you. You don't have to deal with this no more. This issue you've been living with it since you were a little girl, 13 to 18, for five years was my issue. And not just that. But the other issue, yes. I was grown with children. Hallelujah. So I want to say about 10, 12, 13 years, probably like her, I dealt with the issues yes. of all of that. And then the unforgiveness because I felt like I let them down. But God said, come on, my daughter. I want to take it from you. Yes. Hallelujah. And he took it from me. And after he took it from me, he said, now, my beautiful daughter, he stood me up and he said, you are wonderfully and created and made by me. Hallelujah. I took all that old stuff and I put it in the sea of forgetfulness. Now I'm sending you out to go talk to beautiful women like me. Hallelujah. So here I stand. Glory to God. He said, now I've empowered you, that total healed woman of God that was bound for all those years. So women of God, we're going to get free. We're going to get free. We're going to get free today. And that's what God is saying. Allow him to do it. Hallelujah. Be honest about everything you're holding on to, and he wants you to give it to him. And I believe Pastor Tina's going to give you the next instructions. Feel with you. Don't remember this verse right here. Once she brings her, her assignment to, to the women, 1 Timothy 1 and 7, don't let fear set in, okay? Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Glory. Hallelujah.